Hello and welcome to Skeindeer Nets. My name is Ellie and I am a Norwegian living and knitting in London. And you can follow me on Instagram under the name Skeindeer and you can find me as a designer on Ravelry under the name Skeindeer Knits. But of course do please join the Ravelry group Skeindeer Knits which is the best place to take part in knit alongs and get help with my patterns or take part in it along so I just said that I haven't done this for a few weeks anyway that group is the place to be if you want any questions to be answered and such yes welcome <laughs> welcome back to returning viewers so I've been waiting for weeks for me to do this again because I have been traveling as those of you who have watched my vloggist will have known and yes welcome to new viewers you will of course not know what I'm talking about at all this is my podcast about knitting. It is technically a video cast where I sit and talk about knitting for about an hour or so. Probably a lot longer today because I have quite the whole... I'm just going to say up front, this is probably the biggest yarn acquisition section I have ever done and hopefully will ever do because this is mad. And it's not just because of Norway, it's also because of some very generous souls. <laughs> so I'm totally going to blame them instead of myself. So yeah, I talk about knitting here, it's pretty much what I do, I talk about what I have knitted, what I am knitting now, things I am designing, designs that are out, knit alongs and such. And the knit alongs I am currently hosting are the Skeindeer Sock Along, which is coming to an end at the end of this week. At the end of August it will be done, so you need to make sure that you have put your finished sock patterns, sock projects in the finished objects thread. Uh, make sure you don't put it in the chatter thread and make sure you don't chat in the finished objects thread. And yeah, they have to be patterns of mine and they have to be knitted during the duration of this knit-along. And I am hosting the year-long knit-along, which is where we aim to make six pairs of colourwork mittens for the duration of 2018. And it is a lot of fun. And if you want to have a bit of a, a push to get into that, I am hosting a third knit-along. And this is the last one, I promise. It is the second <laughs> Sadman Mitten Club, which also is a knit-along. So yeah. The Selma Mitten Club, in case you are new to this, I launched a club last year. It is a subscription club where you get a mitten pattern a month before Christmas. So there's one coming on the 1st of September, there's one coming on the 1st of October. These are both DK weight. There's already an iron weight, two sort of light bulky weight in the collection already. And the rest will appear later. We will also get some sport two fingering weight in... Uh, Oh, mine black. November, 1st of November. And there will be a even tightly knit sport to fingering weight in, on the 1st of December. I have provided several links down below, both to the actual bundle where you can buy the club, be a part of it, if you will, and to the bundles in my favourites, which will help you get some yarns that may fit. Of course, there are lots of yarns out there that are not in these bundles that you can also try. I don't know all yarns under the sun, but I just want to show you that you really don't have to just knit one yarn, you know. And there is also the chatter thread, which I've also linked to below. Before I get into the very heavy meat of this podcast episode, I will let you know, in case you understand Norwegian, that I have guested a Norwegian knitting podcast, and it's actually my favourite Norwegian video knitting podcast, Sticky Therapy, translates to knitting therapy, and it is in Norwegian. And I think that's great because we need Norwegian knitting podcasts as well. And they so graciously had me on their podcast. And it was really fun and I loved having out, hanging out with those girls. And I hope you enjoy it if you haven't seen already and if you are able to understand what we're saying. And if you aren't, then uh, there are people who just watch their podcast because they think it's just lovely to watch. So... Yeah, I am just really thrilled that I got to be part of that and I guess maybe also as a result of that maybe you are new to this podcast because you found me through theirs, in which case, hello, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> We're gonna be a bit chop 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 in this episode because there is so much yarn, there's a pile of yarn there, there's a pile of yarn on my bed and there's a pile of yarn on my floor. I don't know what happened the past few weeks. I This is probably the first time I have generally felt 100% that I just have too much yarn and that there is such a thing. So until then, let's just talk about stuff that I am knitting on. I have been teasing you with this sweater for way longer than I thought I would, but the good news is that I have made some progress. It lies in my I was going to say floof bag, uh, which is what I called it because this is the floof pattern, but no, it is in my plister bag, which you can get if you buy the plister rucksack, which is like made for knitters, but probably works for everyone else as well. Um, this is floof. 
<laughs> Let's see which way is up, shall we? I have worked so much of the body. There really isn't much left now. There really isn't. I might need a bit this much more and then I'm going to do a high-low hem. It is going to be cropped, but uh, I just haven't decided how cropped. <laughs> and I also think because it's top down, you really, you can just crop it to your liking. The sleeves fit me so well. I just have to say that they are not too tight and not loose. I am so thrilled about that. Um, I went for some fairly nice snug one by one rib cuffs here. You can finish that off with a tubular bind off if you like. I just did a regular one, but that is a thing I wanted to leave as an option because it looks really nice. As the other sleeve, it looks the same. <laughs> and the neck opening, I am thinking of maybe modifying it to be slightly more open just because I know that not everyone likes them as high up as I do. It's not too high up, it goes literally just around my neck, it doesn't go up. Up, up. But I will be modifying that just so that you know. And I, yeah, I might just reduce the little bump here to take that into here. That made probably no sense to you, but I can basically do that. If I, these increases that happen too frequently here, if I space them out here, we get more rows here. This makes sense mathematically so i'm gonna do that and then i'm right just finish up the writing send it up to test knitters and there we are i have not put a call for test knitters for this yet so that is still something that will happen on my instagram whenever i choose to please don't message me about it until i put a call out and even then don't message me because i deal with this in the comment section so there is that floof is happening i am knitting it holding um a pure wool double with a silk mohair and I will talk more about the yarn once the pattern comes out, I think. But, oh, it is lovely. It is so lovely. Hmm. Anyway, we have so much to get, go through. I just thought you might like to know that this is actually happening. And I have so many exciting things to say about this. At least I think so, when it is ready to be knitted. And the good news, I guess, is also that I have plenty of yarn. I did only get uh, five silk mohair balls when they were being uh, sold from a local yarn shop as they are and uh, that was all the balls they had left of that so i wasn't sure if there would be enough there's apparently plenty so no worries there i can't actually remember if i said this i feel like that should have been part in the initial babble of this uh, video but uh, yeah the reason i haven't been here for a while is because i have been traveling i have been to norway more specifically oslo and i have been to germany and i've been to several places in germany and i will go through the places i've been as i show you the yarn that i bought i might include some footage at the end of this video of um just stuff from my vlog. You will have seen it if you have watched vloggers, but I don't expect you all to have done that because it's just bonus content and you may or may not have time for that. So I may include that at the end of this video if there is room for it. If not, then you may need to watch back. Regardless, I, yeah, have a lot of yarn from Oslo and from Germany. And that, that's why I was part of a Norwegian podcast. I am really out of it today. I actually returned um, the day before yesterday and all of yesterday I just had a headache. I don't usually get headaches, but I was just completely done. Uh, and now I'm ready to podcast again, so we're back on. <laughs> so the other thing I have knitted on, and this lies in my Jibiru Sos bag, and it is the tarmac top. It is not done yet, and no, it wasn't going to be finished before the hot weather was gone, was it? So, but this is how far I've gotten. We have a serious body happening here now. That's a lot more than last time, I would say. I'm still increasing. I feel like I have maybe four or five increase rounds left now. It's getting really, really big. I have a suspicion maybe I chose a too big size now, but is there ever such a thing? I don't think so. So, yay, tarmac, knitted in, holds coast at a total value of six pounds. <laughs> and it's lovely. It's a cotton lamb's wool blend, really light. It didn't bother me to knit on in the heat, so I reckon it won't be too hot to wear in the heat because yes, wool is, heat retaining but it's also very breathable so when it's this thin i can't imagine it being retaining more heat than any other plant fiber that we would normally wear in the heat so yeah i don't know how many other ways i can show you this thing it's a little bit crinkled for having been in my bag it is cotton after all but yeah i'm just knitting on it it's very mindless at this point it's been mindless ever since i joined to the underarms quite frankly and it's been very good to just pick out when i want to knit with people and don't want to knit on a very big thing i've been knitting on this the past two weeks uh unfortunately i cannot show you this project because it will be published which is very exciting and of course with these publications you cannot really show people up front 
but it will come out hopefully you know in not too long but i'm still knitting on it so it, there, there will be some time still now we are going to have a bit of a fond return of a project we haven't seen in a while that lays in my loop and bar bag which is probably of my smallest project bags my absolute favorite project bag it is so freaking cute <laughs> isn't this adorable i have to say loop and bar my favorite probably my favorite knitting bag i just love the aesthetics of these they are so totally beautiful and adorable like i said and so it makes sense that in this project bag i have a very adorable project i have been picking back up my magnolia socks this is a sock pattern as that is part of the sock society by helen stewart of curious handmade and i have sort of made myself a very implicit sort of men internal not something I've said publicly, goal of making all the socks of this collection. I have done one pair and I am now on the second and these were not as mindless as the first pair which is why they're taking me so long which is also why they have been perfect when I have been traveling on various trains and planes and I look forward to knitting the next pair because they are mostly just stockinette and there will there's also a fourth pair that's come out now so i am really behind anyway this is what the socks look like uh, i know that probably doesn't look like much so i am going to show you putting my hand through that that will probably help won't it so yes there we are i am knitting this with circus tonic handmade yarn i have completely forgotten the name of the base and the colorway it is a merino nylon base with 425 meters that should help you figure out which one it is it was part of a sock club that she did and uh online friend of mine louise kindly gifted this to me and because the yarn actually recommends circus tonic handmade and because she's a good friend of mine i thought it would be very fitting to use this in this sock pattern and I just love it it's been a lot of blood sweat and tears gone into this these are not as simple as the other socks in the club um and I really appreciated that but they do take time they also take time because I'm doing two at a time which yes of course that takes longer not just because you are you know taking twice as long you're doing two socks but there is the changing between them that will add a little bit of time but I just know with myself that if I hadn't done that i probably just make one socks so one socks english can you tell i didn't speak much english in norway and when i was in norway you could just tell i haven't spoken norwegian in a while so i'm just damaged language wise on all fronts so yeah i have turned for the heel the heels are done it's a nice cough down heel flap and gusset very conventional and i've actually come to really appreciate it at least ever since i started knitting from this club they are just described in a way that it makes sense to me uh i am more comfortable with picking up stitches than i was when i first started uh heel flaps and gussets so i like them and i'm just now knitting on these whenever i have some time to myself where a complicated knit is a welcome thing and they don't take much space in my bag so they're actually pretty good to bring around so that is all i have to say about these socks hopefully they will be finished in not too long but there are a lot of deadline knits for me to knit on and these are just for pleasure as is the tarmac top and now that uh the heat wave may have stopped might be too soon to say but i feel like i hope so uh then these are you know less important knits and they may fall into the ufo pile oh dear Okay, one last thing before I get into the stash acquisition section of this podcast episode. I have a finished object. And I will say, I'm not sure when this video will go up, but if your name is Katie, who's having a baby shower soon, just look away. Just wait until, you know, just wait. <laughs> um, okay, looked away, good. Okay, I'm going to show the rest of you guys. I have finished this little thing. Is it not the cutest? Oh. And it still smells so sheepy and a bit of wool detergent because I washed it yesterday and it hasn't dried yet. So there we are. It is done. And you might be wondering, when does this when did this happen? What is this? Well, I actually started this last year. I believe on my Ravelry it says I started it on the 4th of August because some friends of mine in Norway were expecting and I thought this will be a quick knit 
And I felt a little bit challenged by Katie when she said she was going to knit a baby yoke for her boss, essentially, who was expecting. And I was like, I want to knit a baby yoke and I want to knit another. I want to knit a sewn in sleeve baby cardigan with colour work and it's going to be cute and fast. Famous last words, it was not. But I think it because it has been sort of inadvertently uh, inspired by Katie, that is probably why I feel like this is such a good fit for her upcoming baby. Because it is just, you know, woodland animals, which we both have a huge love for. So there we are. It's got lots of squirrels on it. This is a design by, I believe, Leanna Holmes Samsa, possibly also uh, the other author of the book Kofteboken 2, which is the cardigan book 2 from Norway. This is a Norwegian only pattern, I'm afraid. And I have used a plethora of yarns in this thing. The grey is Lamb's Wool by Roma. You can get that from the Isolde shop, I believe, in case anyone's gonna ask me. And the brown is actually Jameson's Ultra, which is more of a, a lace weight yarn, but because it's wool and spun, I feel like I can use that with the light fingering weight of Roma Lamul. The green and the white here, you can see it's quite different from the rest of the wool. That is a worsted spun yarn from Susan Crawford. It's Susan Crawford Fenella, which is also a light fingering weight yarn. It is spun by John Arben and they only do wool and spun, sorry, worsted spun yarn over there. So that is why you will see that they are a lot more defined. If we can get some focus, yes. As for the blue, that is Garnud Salg's Heilands Ull. It is quite similar, if not identical, to Hull Super Soft. So I just wanted to use a bit of that. So that is it, you guys. It is done. It needs buttons. I have some Liberty buttons that I bought for this again last year, last August. That is going to look beautiful in these. They are brown and wooden and will just be perfect. As for the inside, this is how it looks. It may look a little bit odd that these holes are brown because surely the sleeves are grey and this is part of the sleeve that has been sewn on over the, the sticking hole of the arm to just make it look neat. You can see a little bit of the cutting edge here. I was just scared of running out of the grey. Turned out I had to actually um, start a second ball of grey anyway so it really didn't make a huge difference. But it looks kind of cool. I quite like this. Um, what else is there to say? I staked the opening as well, of course. I don't know if I'm gonna tack this down or anything. I might, we'll see if I get time after I sew on the buttons, but it really, really doesn't matter if I have or haven't. They will, it will stay put. I am very confident about that. Um, yeah, there was a lot of staking and seaming together the arms up here, cutting up the armhole, cutting up the front, so um, picking up for the, the neck to knit in the round. It was a good practice. It's been a long time since I constructed a garment this way. It is a very sort of traditional Norwegian garment construction that I guess I am planning on putting into a future design of myself because I have been working on this design for ages. It's, it's got nothing to do with this. It's just that conventional construction method. Um, and it's been good to like revisit that before I tackle my own design. So there we are. So you may want to see the floats. I never really show off my floats, but this is what they look like. They are not perfect. You can see where I'm having to hold three strands together for the, the white, green and grey here. It's a lot tighter. I should have kept my floats looser here. Oh well. Not very good at holding three strands together at one time because uh, it's a pain, to be honest. <laughs> but I'm so glad to be done with this. It is an old, old UFO and as soon as I heard that, you know, Katie was pregnant, I thought this is a perfect fit. This is just perfect. So I finally find some mojo to finish this again. Again, as if I ever finished it before. To pick it up again, to finish it. And yes, oh, I'm just gonna hold it up. It's so cute, it's so cute. So yeah, I'm sorry. I have no idea how you can get this in English. I'm pretty sure it's only available in book form in Norwegian, in Norway. Someone's gonna ask me, so I'm just gonna say that up front. I really am not too optimistic about that. But if you are wondering, you could get in touch with the publisher or something and the links through my Ravelry project to the pattern where you can find out more about that. So yeah, squirrel cardigan. It's literally called that. It's called Ekun Kofte. Kofte is a color work cardigan from Norway. Ekun is squirrel, which sounds weirdly similar to acorn, which squirrels eat. Yeah, let's just sit and think about that for a bit. Anyway, 
I am now going to put this away. We're not going to see it again because I am going, going to give it away, obviously. Uh, it's not my size. And we're now going to begin the haul. I will be talking about my trip to Norway kind of alongside the haul. Same thing with Germany. I will just centre it around what I bought. It seems to be the best way to condense all the stuff that I have done. But if you are less keen on the haul and more into just my travel, then my vloggist videos will certainly probably fit a little bit better. So, let the haul begin. <laughs> So, because I was slightly a bit too optimistic about my shopping in Norway and Germany, I made a little order from Garnud Salg because of reasons. I'm not sure this was justified. It had been a long time since I made an online order and I felt like doing it. And I thought, what's another burgundy cone? Except, actually, they have caked up the cone for me. And yes, it is a different burgundy shade than the one I already have in a cone from theirs. It is darker. The one I have is glue wine, and this one is written in the show notes below. Merk Amarune, apparently is the name. They are Danish, so they will have Danish names mostly. Um, so yeah, this is 500 grams of uh, Heilands Ull, which is very similar to Hull's Super Soft, Daisy Rennie Super Soft, all of those Super Soft type yarns. And I love it, and it could become several cardigans because there's so much yarn in this. So much yarn. That's not all I ordered from theirs, no, because I thought, you know what, I'm a bit on a, on a silk mohair kick and they are expensive, except from Garnutsalg. They're not as expensive from there. So I got, I think, what, five or six of these? So this is the light petroleum colorway of theirs. It's kid silk mohair. Not the softest kid silk mohair I have uh, touched. It isn't, but that's what, right? I think it's quite similar to most um, silk mohairs out there. Not like fancy schmancy ones like Isagar and um, Shibui, but still, you know, kind of ordinarily. Yeah. The other thing I have in this bag is a sweater quantity, hold on to your seats, a sweater quantity of pure cashmere, which is pretty much as far out of my comfort zone as you can get. <laughs> I have in recent episodes talked about yarn preferences and yarn snobbery and how there is a difference between like making other people's yarn preferences your business and just actually liking stuff that isn't synthetic or super fancy. And I said that, you know, well I neither like acrylic nor cashmere because cashmere peels and acrylic is plastic. Well, apparently I bought cashmere. <laughs> Which I don't really like because cashmere peels, like I said, and my thought behind this is really just to have a very soft, thin, tight-knit sweater for me. Not to wear publicly, not to wear on yarn shows, just to wear when I'm in my room and I don't care that it has peeled like nobody's business. And for that, you know, really cashmere is perfect. And this was a heavily discounted cashmere sweater quantity, so I got several. Um, meter rich is comparable to a lot of the super soft yarns. It's got 275 meters in the 50 gram ball. It is 100% cashmere. Look at the label if you don't believe me. It feels very soft. It, it will probably peel, but it's not like the skein looks hideous already and I have handled it quite a bit. I thought this was going to be grey though, but I would say this has a hint of many colours, in particular green, but with a hue of blue. I wouldn't say this is grey, not the grey that I thought it was based on the photo and the name grey. But that's fine. I'll just deal with what I got. It's just a bit annoying when photos don't... or the name reflects the actual colour. Anyway, chuck that back into here. This is where all the silk mohair and cashmere lives until I have sorted out my stash. Because this is a mess and I hadn't really expected receiving this before travelling. That didn't stop me from going recklessly though. So let's swiftly move on to Norway. I landed in Norway pretty late because of some flight delays because there had been a storm over Norway just before I was gonna go. And of course the first thing I did the day after I landed was going to my favorite Heimen Husfrieden in Oslo. And I mainly picked up yarn for uh, a friend and for me. What is left here was what was for me. The other half I have shipped up to my friend. But 
I have actually knitted up quite a bit of this already because it is for this upcoming publication. And so what's left is actually more yarn for this publication. I clearly have bought a little bit too much. And there's also just a pile of unbleached white and black phenol yarn from Roma in this bag because I just need that in my stash. I will always balance out white and black with some other colours. That is just something I'm very happy to have in my stash. So absolutely no stash fattening guilt for, on that part. I also bought some more pale gint yarn in these colours because I'm already working up something in that yarn and I am a little bit scared of running short. I don't think I will. But I thought better safe than sorry since I'm already there and it's... There's no worry about any of these yarns are cheaper than actually in Norway. So that is primarily what this bag is. It's just, yeah, Per Gint and Fienul. Fienul is one of my favourite yarns from Doma and Per Gint is one of my favourite yarns from Sunness. I also bought myself some tin buttons because I wanted them for a cardigan I'm designing. I'm designing a lot of things and there's a lot of things I can't show you for a plethora of reasons. I'm very sorry. It's becoming a bit tedious that I'm telling you that I can't show you but I will show you a little detail. I love Norwegian tin buttons. Look at that. This quite reflects the design I'm going for as well. So we can have that as a little bit of a teaser. Just a bit of a teaser. So yeah, I've got eight of these because I just think eight is a good button count. Now, of course, I had to pop by my other favorite, which is Vadbit, which is the only brick and mortar shop in Oslo that is primarily for hand dyed yarn. So Vadbit is actually the hand dyed yarn business by Laila who runs the shop and she also runs it with Camilla who makes amazing project bags and because I was shamelessly drooling over these bags for so long she suggested that you know what if I get one will I try it use it and review it on my podcast and I was like yes please and thank you <laughs> so I got this bag this is by Mode. this is her logo can get this from the Vadbit shop. There might be some online sources as well. I will investigate. And they are made in a canvas fabric that she dyes herself, which I think is awesome. They come in all these different colors. And I said, I want gray, please. And now that I look at it, I feel like it's a little bit blue. I don't know, is that, is that just me? I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's both. And in here I got some yarn and I hope I can make some designs or a design with this yarn in the future because it is really quite special and it should work well together. Anyway, this yarn, it's so lovely. It is a 200 gram altogether gradient dyed by Lola of Vadbit. And the base is quite interesting. It is made by Hillesvog, which is one of my favorite yarn companies in Norway. But they have made a special blend for Lila and it's called Venul. Venul is a 85% lamb's wool from Norwegian white sheep and 15% pelt wool. Now if you're new to like Norwegian sheep breeds and that stuff, you can check out Diana Walla of Paper Tiger's video on Norwegian sheep bases and yarns and wool. It's really good and comprehensive. But yeah, it's basically Sölje meets Vilje both of Hillesvog. It's so, so, so lovely. I can't even tell you. It just feels so good to handle. Oh, so there's that. But alongside these, I got a handful of this. So this is the four of these and they're just dyed in a ball like this. It's a silk mohair. Feels really nice. And because they're dyed this way, if you dig into the middle, you will see here that it's a lot lighter in the center. I'm not sure how well this comes across. I'll try to show you on several of them. They may differ in their gradients. I'm gonna try to wind them up and see for myself. But yeah, the deeper you dig into these, they're quite well felted together, but the deeper you dig, the lighter the blue. So I think, okay, well, we have a blue gradient here, essentially, and there's a blue gradient here. Huh. And the meter of each of these corresponds pretty well. But what on earth do I do with them? It's, um, I want to say, what, 750 meters here? And here, if I hold them double, we will have 750 meters. I don't know what I could make with that. Maybe a shawl? I, yeah, I don't know. I was thinking a garment. This feels 
so lovely. It could be a good short one. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but I am so excited and I will be kind of sitting on these for a while before I decide. I mean, oh, this color and this color. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will try to do them justice once I know what to do with them. They are so lovely. I just love this base, but I need to move on because there's so much to talk about, but I am really, really gushing over this and I'm kind of just keeping them in this bag because it's just such a nice collection and memory from my trip. One thing that was really annoying though is what I found out was that a couple of days after I was going to leave Oslo for Germany, Christy Glass was gonna come to Oslo to have like a big sort of yarn vent thing in the Vadbit shop, which I so graciously missed out on. <sighs> FOMO, FOMO. Anyway, more yarn. Actually, I lie. I got another project bag from the lovely Ingeville of the Sticky Therapy podcast. She'd been buying and sewing, so buying fabric and sewing this bag whilst I was in Oslo, and she gave it to me and my jaw dropped because it has all my favorite things on it. It's a woodland print. It's a drawstring bag. It's beautiful. And it even has little burgundy stitch markers on here. Oh, and this is the inside. Look at that. Look at that. It is so, so precious. I love this bag so much. I really couldn't find the words and I was trying to find the words <laughs> other than thank you. I'm really grateful. It is so, so, so beautiful. And I don't know how much I can say about this, but I do know that Ingvild wants to open up to more international buyers in time. And she's also pitched me uh, some of the ideas she has about future project bags. So I am very excited to see all of this happen. But until then, until then, you can get these if you're in Norway. And I have linked to the shop below. So maybe if the availability has changed to more internationally, then you could perhaps get them. But yeah, keep your eyes peeled. I think these bags are so, so lovely and I am so happy to have one and I'm just... <sighs> God, it's it's hard to put away all the things to talk about all the other things, you know? You know? So anyway, close up of the print one last time. Don't you just wish you had a dress in this print? Or a skirt? Or a blouse? Or everything? I also want to say, I'm sorry if anyone finds this a little bit too... Oh, if you want to buy this, you can go there and go there. I don't do that as a way of like being told to do that uh my opinions are my own i don't do that kind of sort of sponsorship or anything the only reason i say these things is because i always get questions oh where can i buy that and so it's easy for me to say it here so hopefully you understand that it's not because i'm actually under any motivation to make you guys buy anything so i just thought i'd say that up front because there will be more of that coming up now so yeah, so also it's becoming very interesting lately. Um, I really am thinking about that being my next place to move. I know I've been teasing about Edinburgh and I'm, as much as I'd like to stay in the UK with, for political reasons, it's becoming rather hard. They don't want me here, you know, politically speaking. So I'm thinking about Oslo and Oslo is becoming very interesting as far as yarn goes. There are so many interesting yarn shops coming up, some yarn shops that are very unique to Oslo, like they've had the pickles shop for a long time, which I graciously managed to not buy anything in even though I walked in there twice because I already have a pile of pickles yarn and I know if I want some I could probably ask my friend who works there if she'd mind. Um, if I could shop through her. So I managed to contain myself there, but I just want to say shops like Pickles and Vadbit and Frukvist, they're really making Oslo quite interesting for a knitter because they're so unique to anything you can get in the other cities. And so I shopped at Frukvist. And Frukvist is interesting because it's not just a yarn shop. It's one floor with yarn, one floor with books and notions and even children's books. And it's so lovely and has this sort of woodlands aesthetic to it that of course appeals to me. And I bought yarn. So, arg, arg. <laughs> so these are quite slippery, so I struggled a bit with picking them up. But yeah, I am apparently channeling yellow a bit lately because I want a yellow silk mohair sweater eventually. You remember when I did that one silk mohair sweater I have and I said, Oh yeah, this is fun, but I'm not going to do this again, I don't think. And suddenly I want to do all the Sigma Hair jumpers. Didn't think I was going to be bitten by that bug, but here we are. I now have three Sigma Hair quantities that I haven't, uh, yeah, 
made any specific plans for. Oopsie. So there we are. Yellow. This is by Filkulana. It's the Tilia yarn. I think this is a Danish brand, possibly. So there we are. Colorway is 136. And I really like it. And it was really interesting to see the selection of silk mohair in Oslo. Because both at Fruqvist and at the yarn shop Shodevent, they had like a wall of silk mohair from various companies. And that just makes the selection so much fun. We can see all these exciting colours. So I would recommend going there if you are curious, if you just want to see, you know, silk mohair from various brands. But yeah, I had a really good time at the Fruqvist shop. I talked to the shop owner and I talked to the dyer behind, if I get this right, the Happy Little Dye Pot, which I have come across before, but I never met her in person. And so she recognized me and said, please do, would you like some yarn? I will happily give you a skein. Actually make that too. So um, that was totally unexpected. Here I am just walking into a yarn shop thinking I'm gonna be a completely incognito and I come away with these luxury skeins in yellow because apparently I'm in a yellow mood. I don't know if this is a colour I can wear next to skin, but you know, there's nothing wrong with knitting shawls for others either, so I'm not sure. But the idea is, you know, a shawl. So this is the Happy Little Dye Pot. And this is on the Bliss base, and no wonder it's called that. It is a 70% merino, 20% silk and 10% cashmere. It's got 400 meters per 100 grams. Aww so beautiful oh i am struggling a bit with the light today guys and it's all my fault because i sat here until noon doing nothing so if i'd started earlier i wouldn't have this problem so if i complain about that it's all my fault we all know this but yeah i have absolutely no anything plans for these yet it came as a complete surprise uh if you have any idea so maybe i'll just keep it for any of the shawls in the shawl society anything like that um it's lovely and if if you are curious about where you can get this yarn, there is the the happy little dye pot .etsy .com, or she will be at the Bergen Knitting Festival, I believe. So those should be some viable options for you there. I was also given this booklet by the shop. This is a booklet by Dale, which is full of their Cortina design. And this is quite interesting because we talked about the Marius a lot of times. Well, Dale simultaneously came up with the Cortina and it's caused a lot of fuss. So I find it very interesting that Dale is still pushing the Cortina and I, I think I'm in favour. I'm not sure because I'm very team both. It's a very stupid situation, actually. So I'm very happy to see that they are standing their ground with a design that I think is unique enough. And... It's just full of variations where you can knit this on all sorts of things. So I don't really see this as an alternative to the Marius. I am very happy having both. So here's another thingy thing. I do believe this is all in Norwegian, but it could be available in English as well. So yeah, lots of variations of the Cortina pattern. Like I said, I'm not sure if it is available in English, but I know that Dala sadly has been bought by House of Yarn, which is a more internationally tuned company. I believe they're still Norwegian, but they've moved the production abroad. And so it might be possible that they are translated. And I was told by Fruqvist that they actually have some English language patterns in general. Um, which is interesting because I have been asked earlier because a lot of people ask me about yarn shopping in Oslo, which guys, I'm I'm not from Oslo. I can't really shed much light on that. But in relation to that, I have I have been asked um, if I, you know, they can find English language patterns in Norway, and I'm like, no. But Frikvist apparently does some, so it would be worth going by there. It's a very central located shop. Um, spelled f-r-u-k-v-i-s-t so there that would be the place to look for english language patterns um there was another thing i bought in this shop as well i was debating whether to show you this up front in my haul or at the very end but i think it belongs right here in the middle just prepare you for what's coming up this is the mug crazy yarn lady <laughs> Do you think it's appropriate? I don't know. <laughs> so I 
love this mug. I really struggled just to choose one with the right colour inside, but for some reason green spoke to me that day. So we got green. And I also was given a lovely little stitch marker with a skein on it, or a ball. This is not, this is the closest thing we're getting to focus. And I got some tea. They gave me some tea. This looks so lovely. It's, it kind of looks a bit German. Not that I would know, I've only been there for a week. We'll get to that. But yeah, crazy yarn lady mug. I don't know, should this be like the caption folks of the, the video? It seems pretty apt. Yarn lady. <laughs> So me and fellow podcasters Christina and Ingvil were walking through Oslo and suddenly, unexpectedly actually, found ourselves in front of Haven Husfrieden. So I went there again and they have a yarn shopping ban and they managed to actually keep to that whereas I bought more yarn from the very same shop I'd been to a few days earlier. So I came out with another shopping bag. Yeah. And I have now decided to make a chunky weight yoke in this lovely purpley burgundy something. But this is a contrast colour, which is more of a white, grey, grey white. Now, funnily enough, there's also a red ball in here, which I'm not sure why I thought I'd do with, but it's pretty. So, I don't know. There's actually two of them. So I'm not sure what my thinking was there. I realise now this is a yarn I actually haven't talked that much about. So I'm going to give it a bit of a, a spotlight. This is what it looks like. This is called Vums PT3, similar to how Fenul is now called Fenul PT2. Because PT3 used to be a yarn by PT, Per Tübring, that was more of an iron weight. And Ravima had something very similar called Vums Agarn, so they just smashed them together into one. You can use these for the, the chunky cyber mittens, the speedy cyber mittens, that's what I call them. Uh, and I think I want to do a jumper with them because I think this yarn is so lovely. It's so nice to handle. Um, yeah. Mm. I really want to start this soon. I think it could be such a quick design to work out, but you know, famous last words. So I popped by that bit again because I actually hadn't been able to decide what to buy there. So I just asked if I could put the yarn aside and decide the next day I was going to come in because then we wouldn't have so much lined up. And I did make some selections. I bought myself a black ball of lamb's wool from Roma because you can also buy regular commercial yarns in that shop from Roma and Hillesvog in particular. My two favourites. I'm not complaining. <laughs> so there's that and I thought that can go really well with this hand dyed lamb's wool. So this is the same yarn but this is what Lila has dyed and I thought these could be some really epic mittens. Look at that. It, we are running the risk of a bit of a low contrast situation up here, but we'll make do. I think this could be really cool. So see what I developed from this. You never know, but I, I am just so excited that you can get this kind of yarn, right? A tonal, a variegated, a speckled yarn on my favorite bases, and it looks so nice. I don't like when we have to choose between hand dyed fancy schmancy yarn and rustic woolen spun yarns. I like when I can get both. So, yeah. And I got more of the Venul yarn. I got this, which is so much fun. This is how the yarn looks naturally here. It's close to white, but not quite because of the small portion of pelt wool. And it's speckled with all the fun colors. I just love this. I just bought this for fun. I have no idea what to do with it. I just, I just fell completely head over heels in love with it. It's like cake pops, right? Ah, oh. so a bit of a spec specs reading. This is the sport weight version of the Vernul yarn. They also have a fingering weight version. I actually love that Lila is using this terminology because it hasn't really ever been used in Norway before. And it's quite helpful. It's got 290 meters per 100 grams. And yeah, it's the same mix. This 85% lamb's wool and 15% pelt wool. Ah, I love this so much. And I got another two. And I thought these could make some really cool mittens. I know there's some overlapping color, but I thought that would be really nice. So I'm already thinking mittens. Just thinking mittens all the time. You guys had enough mittens? Didn't hear? No. No, good. <laughs> I think these could be really, really good together. 
So that's also on Venul, and that's all I got from Vadbit. I just love that shop. I am so excited that that is a shop that exists, and it's like, it's ethos, it's just right up my alley. Yeah, it's just nice when there are other people who have the kind of same ideas and vision about yarn that I do. It's the enthusiasm about Norwegian yarn, and also a very strong ethical point of view. Um, I know that every yarn I can buy in that shop has a high ethical kind of... I don't know, stamp of approval from Lila. It really takes a lot for the yarn to come into the shop. It needs to, you know, we need to know that the animal's been treated well, etc. So I'm really happy about that. I nearly forgot to mention this booklet. This is something I picked up alongside with the Roma yarn, which is a new booklet by PT. I'm not going to go through this. I thought I'd just show you the icons of all the designs. It's such a nice variety of designs in here. It's I love this. I'm not sure if I ever will knit from it just because I don't really have time to knit so much anymore. I mean, other people's designs. But I hope to, and I wouldn't even know what to choose first because it's such a nice selection of designs in here. And I'm very, very thrilled to see that there is signs that Roma and PT are looking kind of what's going on a bit more internationally, uh, which is, you know, a good sign. Again, if you're new to this podcast, I just ha I'm on a mission to make the Norwegian knitting scene a bit less insular. I am so excited to see Norwegian knitters going on Instagram and taking part in Ravelry and really embracing the international knitting scene. And I'm at the same time very excited to see more that Norwegian wool are becoming more accessible internationally and that the Norwegian wool companies are looking internationally for both what they do, but also where they can export their stuff. So I may have picked up some other yarns. This yarn is quite interesting. This is four yellow skeins, two purple ones, and one kind of oatmeal gray. So let me just hold up one of each. This is, I've shown you this yarn ages ago, but let's, it doesn't hurt repeating. It's not Norwegian wool, but it's sold by a Norwegian yarn company. It's called Nusterbarns Merino Ull Totrol, so two ply merino wool. I have for the longest time dismissed this yarn because I just heard about Nusterbarn which translates to skein child and I thought I don't really care I'm, I don't have babies why should I care about baby knits well turns out that actually what they do is make people understand and accept that children can wear pure wool and so they sell lots of baby knits in pure wool and they have a nice shelf of yarn in 100% non superwash wool my favorite kind, very similar to yarns we have talked about earlier, such as Whole Super Soft and Daisy Rani, Garnet Salg, what have you. Nice and rustic and washes up to be very soft. And yes, so I had to get some colors that were speaking to me. So this very deep, deep purple color. This oatmeal gray and this amazing yellow because apparently I love yellow now, which means that I'm buying a lot of yellow, but not necessarily knitting with it yet. So I'm gonna be left with a very yellow stash. Yeah, I think it's like there's somewhere in my brain that hasn't like confused the difference between buying yarn and knitting with it. <laughs> that would explain a lot what's happening around here. So yes, I just kind of hoarded that yarn a bit with no specific plans because it's such a like go-to yarn for me in terms of the type it is. And I might hold some of the yellow together with that yellow Phil Colana yarn and make a yellow mohair sweater. I might use it in just bits and bobs here and there on color work. I don't really know, but I don't really have to, so. I almost forgot this. Kristin, who's also part of this Ricky Therapy podcast, gave me a bag of yarn. This is yarn she's balled up from Guld, which is an amazing yarn dyeing company in Denmark that dye naturally dyed yarn on basically two ply lamps wool that we already covered that I love, love so much. I have so much love for that entire company. I have three skeins of theirs and I apparently have four. Um, and I wanna knit them really, really soon. But there are a lot of things I wanna knit really soon. And I also got uh, four skeins that Kristen had left of PT2, which has been discontinued. These are the colors. I'm gonna see if I can keep them in here so you can see. They're really lovely. I don't know what to do with them, but again, this is like stash yarn for me. It's yarn I'm perfectly fine having in my stash until I know what to do with them. And it's nice that they are colors that I don't already have. It keeps things very interesting. And when I mix and match them together, it's gonna be something good. And as a bit of an intermission, I thought I could just mention what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Fern and Feathers Weather 
by Jennifer Strangas. I am so happy that it's cold enough for me to wear it again because London has finally cooled down. It was actually close to freezing when I got back here. That was a bit too cold, but it's it's nice and balanced now. I'm good with this. So, <sighs> nearly all the yarns I have bought so far have been fairly affordable. Like, of course, hand dyed yarns is quite special and you pay for the work that goes in. But when I buy from Roma and Sonnes and Nesteban and all those, it's very affordable yarns and I actually haven't, you know, broken the bank or anything. But then we went to the museum, the Folk Museum in Oslo, which is so good and definitely worth the visit if you're ever going to Oslo. And they have a weaver's studio, which basically means yarn shop, where they had lots of yarns from Hillesborg and Telespin and what have you. But they also had some yarns produced, as far as I understand, pretty much on the museum. Uh, like the sheep they graze on the museum grounds. So I ended up with, these are so special. So I'm gonna try I talk about them in turn. <sighs> this is probably my favorite. It is a charcoal sparso skein. And pretty much all the sparso I have fondled in my life has been very tightly spun because it's been made for weaving. This is technically also made for weaving as it says but i suspect i could knit with this as well it's very woolen and yeah you get the idea it's pretty much right up my alley i think this is lovely and so i wanted to make some mittens with them pairing it with a white but the white feels so different it's a lot stringier it feels like it's very heavy with lanolin and it doesn't feel at all the same if you can get a sense of this this is a lot woolier and this is very yeah just stringy so I don't know how they will work up together, but I bought them anyway, because I just wanted it. So this is the producers. If you want to read of that in your own time, you can do that. And I also got two other skeins, because I wanted to try those. It's also sparso and quite wool and spun. Feels a little bit more as I have come to expect sparso to be. This is kind of their logo. Just to give you an idea. Um, so this is Big de Kongsgård, that's where the sheep graze, and it's just, yeah, very, very strong yarn. I wonder if I could even knit socks with these, because this type of fibre is just so very strong. And I'm very happy to have it. It's very, very special yarn. And I have even begun thinking about possibly doing a third knitting club, which is crazy. I know I said earlier, before launching this year's club, that... Oh, I don't know if I want to do another one of Serbia Mittens. I will make it an annual thing that there is a colourwork mitten club, but I thought maybe Serbia Mittens are done. Maybe we'll just do it once more and then it's been so successful. Already in less than a month, we have more members than we had all of the for the last club. In, oh, I didn't explain that well. So basically, in less than a month, we have more members of the second Serbia Mitten club than there are in the first Cyber Mitten Club, which has been out for a year, which is incredible. And so I'm thinking maybe there is room for one more Cyber Mitten Club, do a third, because three is a good number. And what I'm thinking that I want to do is go really hardcore with the yarns on that one, because I want to step it up every time. And I'm thinking maybe for the third and last Cyber Mitten Club, I will spotlight some very special yarns. I'm thinking these kinds of yarns, maybe Daughter for Shepherd, maybe Cyber Spinity, that kind of thing. I'm just yeah, thinking about the opportunities, but it's a bit too soon to do that, but I'm very excited nonetheless. So there's one last shopping bag from Norway before I went done with the Norway haul, because I went to the last yarn shop I visited, which is actually in the shopping center connected with the main train station, and apparently they still had a pile of PT2 left, which they were on that day going to dis discount and they hadn't put the discount prices up yet and they were I was basically the first to get the discount and I didn't even know that when I took the yarn to the tail because I just knew that I really want more of this color so you will have seen this particular color on this podcast before I bought a lot of it when I knew that PT2 was going to be discontinued not knowing whether this color would be passed on to Fienul I kind of thought it would be but apparently this is not on the new Fienul shade card so it will no longer exist so I made sure to hoard it by buying a whole shopping bag of them. So now I have two sweater quantities in this color because I'm already working up one that's gonna be a cardigan design of mine. And this other one is just for whatever I fancy. So that is not something I feel particularly guilty about, but there's a lot of stash fattening today that I feel like maybe 
possibly a little bit over the top. So now I want to talk to you about my trip to Germany. So yeah, I mainly spent my time in Oslo meeting up with knitters, going to knit nights, um, buying yarn, just having a proper knitting holiday. It was like a one lady knitting retreat. It was amazing and I really like Oslo, which is something I never thought I'd say, but there's something that's happened to both me and Oslo later that means we are a lot better of a match than previously. So. I then left Oslo to go to Germany and I'm really glad I went to Germany after Oslo because I don't think I would have felt so uh, happy about just going straight back to London given the London-Oslo comparison that's going on in my head right now. I was, I will admit I was a bit too tired to be like my full self when I was in Germany so I'm very grateful for the patience and understanding of the people that I stayed with there because I was a bit knackered. But I did manage to buy lots of yarn and there are primarily three things in terms of yarn in Germany that gets me very excited and it's sock yarn, Rauwerk pronunciation and uh, Wollmeise. That's what I'm going to cover now. I managed to get a lot of German sock yarn, mainly Regia, um, Rödewolle and uh, Opel. So let's cover that. First of all, I got these nice grey self-striping sock yarn. I think that was the first I bought and I thought, you know what, that's going to look really cool. I like that. I don't know where I got two because really one would be enough for me if I had contrast heels and toes and cuffs. I also picked up some Regia, so I thought this could be a good contrast for the grey striping stuff. I thought these could go together, so striping pink socks with this black. This feels weirdly softer and smoother than this though. That's odd. Anyway, I'd pair those together. And I got this really fun self-pattern in Regia. i never done self-patterning socks before, so that should be fun. And I really like the colour. If I can give you a close-up, it's like a dark rainbow. Something about it that makes me feel a little bit 80s, but I'm not sure why. And I got this from Opal. Just a bit more... I don't know, traditional, a bit less outrageous. I've been more than hinting to Amy that I should get to borrow her sock machine. Because <laughs> there's a lot of sock on here and I don't really think I need that many socks. So it's a bit crazy, but there we are. So these were primarily yarns that I bought in all of the cities. Um, some in Frankfurt where I was staying with Becky of the Soprano Net Stringing It Together podcast. And some I got when I was staying with my friend Joe, aka Johanna in Ulm. And some I got when I was staying with my friend Teresa in Ingolstadt. And also when me and Teresa and Joe met up in Munich, also known as München. And oh, they've been so amazing. I mean, I think Johanna and Teresa are some of the best like non-knitting friends a knitter can have honestly their patience when taking me to yarn shops if i say i want to go to a yarn shop they just say where do we go and they will go with me there and they don't care that it's not for them and they're just so awesome and they get as excited as i get and i always feel super guilty when i drag them in there because i think oh it's no fun for you and they look really interesting they talk to the people working in the yarn shops and go oh what's that oh that's interesting oh yeah i agree Honestly, you couldn't have wished for better non-knitting friends. So, I ended up with some yarn from the Rauwerk shop. Still trying that pronunciation. It's getting better and better every time. Me and Johanna, uh, it's weird calling her that. Her name is Jo in my head because we met in London and she Englishified her name to make our lives easier. We went into that shop because uh, Christine, who runs the shop from Brighton, was actually working in the shop in Munich on the day, which we had carefully planned out and figured out beforehand. So I bought four skeins of her yarn. I can, yes, get that yarn in two other places to me locally, but I thought because I'm in that yarn shop and it's such special wool, I will get some. So I got four of these, but I'm gonna show you two of them. And these are a very, very dark burgundy. They actually come up more purple here. They are so dark that you may struggle to see whether they are purple or burgundy or not <laughs> in real life so yeah very special i love this wool you will have seen me haul a little bit of this yarn earlier with our dark charcoal yarn so there is that i have another two as well because i've tried to knit with it already so one of which i have already balled up because i did it at my friend joe's place and she obviously doesn't have a swift because she doesn't knit 
Although apparently she claims that I tried to teach her once. Uh, she didn't continue. I don't remember this. Apparently that's something I did. Uh, with permission. Uh, so I started knitting um, Becky's uh, shawl pattern Salonzer, which is lovely. I got to see her shawl in person. It's huge and drapey and warm and lovely and I really wanted it and I just thought I'd cast it on with the yarn I bought. But I don't think the yarn and the pattern is a great match because her bubbles look kind of like drops and mine look like nipples. So this is not going to work out with this yarn. I do however think that the oval yarn that she used will be ideal and if I could ever get my hands on that that would be perfect because that is an alpaca blend. An alpaca, which I normally avoid because it's so drapey, would actually be perfect for this shawl. So that's just something I thought I'd mention because it is a lovely shawl and I was very much looking forward to show you guys that here, but it's just not happening with this particular yarn, I'm afraid. So this morning, instead of actually recording this episode, not being bothered by the sunlight that's bothering me right now, I decided instead to design a shawl, which I have never done in my life, but I felt called to do this. So I'm trying not to lose everything on my lap. This is what I came up with. It's just got her at this moment, very thick needles, because I thought actually with this yarn I can do that and it will be quick and rewarding and a good first shawl design. And I'm now working up some lace here. I uh, already have some questions about a pearl row I did, which I thought would look nice, but it's now looking a bit funny and it looks actually nicer on the back of the shawl. So there's a lot of things I'm figuring out. It looks a bit weird and transparent, but I like it. It'll be good with lace and stuff. I never really design lace. This is all a very like first thing. We'll see how it goes. I will keep you updated. <laughs> and now for the moment we have all been waiting for. Yes, I went to the Bullmeister shop. And this is me trying to re have some self-control, right? This is probably half of what I had picked out initially. So for me, this felt quite, you know, okay. And also what's interesting is, well, a couple of things. I can technically order from Wohlmeiser and get it here to fairly decent shipping. And they have a good availability on their yarn shop. It really wouldn't be that hard. But one, I like seeing the yarn in person. Two, they had a shelf of yarns that was discounted for various reasons, such as having knots or um, a colorway being a little bit off. And third, they apparently have a very special range of hand dyed yarns that I have no idea why they haven't pushed this more online. This I have only seen in their yarn shop and it's so special. It's part of their Harmonista series. And this was the first shelf that faced me when I walked into that shop. I don't know what to say. Why aren't they putting this at the forefront? Because I think this is why... Um, yeah. Okay, start from the beginning. Fullmeister used to be the hottest thing, right? Think about some of the most popular yarn dyeing names right now. You know, La Bien Amy, Hajok Fibers, Pluck and Knitter, Wool and Vine, what have you. Yarns that are sold out as soon as they're available online. That was Wohlmeister a few years ago. Everyone was crazy about them. They would stay up until midnight to get the yarn updates. No idea why they had yarn updates that wasn't really good for people in the very same time zone, but there you are. And it was the hottest thing. And they had this yarn at loop and their phones would run hot from being people calling in and wanting to order the yarn because they couldn't get it online in the loop website shop. Website. <laughs> it was you know, the number one thing. And now Woolmeister has a very established market and they have no problem, I don't think, keeping the business running, but they are the hottest thing anymore. Because what they do is solids and hand-painted yarns, which can pool. And people have now started doing other things such as tonals, variegated, speckled, such as this. And I think if Woolmeister did things like this, they would keep themselves a lot more relevant. And now I'm like, but they have, and they just haven't pushed this online. And so if anyone from Woolmeister is watching this, I love this. I loved everything I saw on this shelf and I would love it if that was pushed a bit more online. It may already be available and I just haven't seen it, but the fact that I haven't seen it and I like to think I pay attention 
suggest that other people may have missed out on this too because I think the bases that Volmiter use are so good sturdy sturdy super wash soft merinos and I think it's something many would be interested in and I wonder why this hasn't been made a big deal because it really should be and I could only really afford one skein because you know yarn budget there is one somewhere and so this was my treat it is on the twin base which is a mix of merino and nylon and I'm very happy to have it. I wish I could have bought more because there were so many lovely colours on that shelf. Lots of variegated and speckles and tonals and yeah. But I did pick up a lot of stuff from the discounted shelf. This is on their pure base and I got three black skeins because I am exciting like that and I've just come to realise that I wear a lot of black. And I did meet someone in Oslo who had uh, one of my favourite cardigans, uh, the Eleanor cardigan, knitted for herself in this very yarn, in this very colour. And I kind of wanted it. So I picked up this from the discounted shelf because both of these have 2K written on them. And I was explaining that that means they have at least two knots in them. And I don't really care. I mean, the way I see it, I don't like tying, weaving in ends, but I wouldn't pay anyone extra to not have to weave in ends. And that's kind of what you do if you buy full price yarns to avoid the knots. So I got these. So that is a sweater quantity. I nearly got a sweater quantity of this as well. This is the Merlot colorway, which is a very true burgundy. If you can see that. The reason I didn't get a three was because I realized I was given one of these in a yarn swap like a year or two ago. So I thought I don't actually need to buy three. I need to buy two and then I will just stripe them with the one I have because these were reduced because F. Farbe colour is a bit off. I don't see anything wrong with this colour, but just to be safe, I will be striping it with this skein that I already have. So that was two sweater quantities. And I feel pretty happy about the last one because it means that I now know what I will be doing with that one skein because with one skein it's kind of hard to know what to do sometimes. So the last thing I got was their sock yarn, and I just got four very exciting colours. A very dark brown close to black I would say a very bright navy a little bit tonal and a bright bright green and an unbleached white or undyed at least and I just think these could become some very exciting socks in time I think Bullmeister sock yarn is pretty good all-round sock yarn if you want to do color work I've seen some very good results there if you want to do well anything else I've seen good results there as well cables textures lace what have you i think these are really really good they are a little bit thicker than a usual sock yarn not to a point that you would notice that much i don't think but it means they are sturdier and if you want superwash merino socks i feel quite confident about these quite frankly so that is all i have for my travel haul it's a lot and what is crazy is that when i got home this yarn shop, Hobium, that sent me a pile of yarn before Christmas, have sent me another pile of yarn. And the least thing I can do to show my gratitude is to give it a good show off here. So that's gonna be the last part of this episode. Um, I'm done with all the Norway and the Germany stuff, but if I do find room for it, I will put a bit of a, a vlog at the end of this video. But if not, you can watch my um, Norway vlog. So like the vloggers series. And they're all very short videos and I usually let you know if I go off into a ramble. So yeah, thank you for watching, but I will now continue with the Hobium yarns that I got. <sighs> it's a lot. It's not even all of it. All of it is behind me. So they have this new yarn called Just Wool and this is kind of the deal. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can put this down here. So I got two of six different colors. Here are some examples. They're all pretty muted. I guess the idea is maybe to use for color work against the sweater quantities I got in the same yarn. But just to show you some of the tones, I'm reading off some of the, some of the content. It's 100% recycled wool, which explains why it feels so ridiculously soft, even though apparently it's 100% wool and I don't think it's super wash treated, albeit it is worsted spun. And yeah, meter edge, 116 meters per 50 gram wool. They also gave me two sweater quantities. Like we had been talking about them sending me some yarn. 
I didn't know about this yarn. Uh, so, yes, I got this very deep, dark burgundy in the same yarn. Sorry, the glare may make it a bit hard to see. Part of the just wool. I mean, how many is that? Six? Ten? Oh, it's ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, that's enough for one jumper. And another one in a beautiful shade of red bordering on burgundy right here. Oh, so, yeah. I already felt like I'd bought too much and then I come home to this huge pile. <laughs> like, the package that was in the kitchen when I got home, nobody else were home so I didn't know what it was. I had to read uh, a bit carefully to find my name on it. And I was like, did someone order a duvet? <laughs> so, uh, this was all Lamia yarn and the yarn I thought they would send me from Lamia, they also sent. Whew, uh, and that's some yarn that I used earlier for that Sylvia McFadden shawl. I think it's called the Friendship Shawl. It's a lovely, soft and very affordable yarn. And I just said, oh, that was nice. I mean, if you can want to send me that again, because they asked me, right? Uh, I hinted that I needed like a few of like one color and then I got eight of two colors. So here are three of each color and there's a package in this. It's another, what, five of them? So there's eight of each color, of these two colors. So uh, I'm gonna throw all these away and show you one. Here we are. This is the yarn. It's a lovely, lovely shade, a very natural shade. 200 meters per 100 grams. Worsted weight and 100% non-superwash wool. Little cute sheepies on it. I really like this. I loved making shawl of it and I might do that again. I, I think all this Hobium yarn, it will be great for giveaways, but I also think it would be really good for Christmas gifts and other gift knits because I can be quite fussy about the yarn that I like and other people often don't understand why I think that's the best yarn, but I think this yarn is quite easy to please people with. I suspect other people, well, I'm like, oh, it's worse, it's pun, it's too smooth to be this and that. I think if I gave this to my mom or my sister or someone, they'd think that was awesome and soft and lovely. And I would feel like it would still work for the kind of knitting I enjoy. So, yeah, I think I'm sorted for Christmas knits this year again. So thank you so much, Hobium, for supporting my gift knitting. <laughs> They did also give me this tote bag, same as I have before, so I think this will be a gift and it's so cute! It's so cute! But if you want to get to the English site, you can either select in the upper left corner that you want it in English and not in Turkish, but you can also go to hobiumyarns.com, which I'll link to below. And that should take you to the site if you want to check it out. So that is all for this episode. I am... A little bit sorry if it was a bit chop 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 but I do have a lot to do today and I just had to go through all of this uh, before both my batteries run out because I only have two and I have a friend visiting me this weekend and it would be nice if I could hide away this yarn so she wouldn't see the damage done. <laughs> So thank you all so much for watching. Um, do want to remind you that uh, the next mitten pattern of the club is coming out in just a few days from this video coming up. Um, that I did guest the Norwegian podcast that's linked to below. And just, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next week and we will hopefully be back into the, the normal schedule of things. So, bye!